So to set the stage, um, yeah, you guys have been around uh, Magnamar, which is right about here-ish. Actually, Magnamar is up here. Sorry. Magnamar is up here. It's hard to see on this map, but that's okay. Um, so Magnamar is kind of in the, the northern Shining Sea area, which is where I am pinging. Uh, you had your your pub slash magic shop slash uh, crime empire growing. Um, and one day into your place of business walk uh, what can best be described as a, a trio of monks uh, who look around and come up to the bar and politely ask uh, who the proprietor of the establishment is. And that would be me. Okay. Uh, they nod and produce uh, a... I'm not going to try and read that right now. Uh, they produce a scroll from their robes uh, that they are wearing. Uh, they hand you the scroll. It has a red seal with a phoenix crest uh, emblazoned into the, the wax sealing the scroll. They nod to you and walk out. Huh. Well then. Um, Do I, I need to go tackle them, boss? We might need to. Keep a track of where they went. Um, and maybe fetch our goblin if it ends up being bad. And then she opens the letter. Uh, the contents of the scroll, as you unfold oh, yeah. it, um, are pretty brief. Uh, I didn't actually write anything for this, so I'm just going to paraphrase it. Uh, basically, the scroll is inviting you, uh, based on your exploits in defeating... Uh, the Whispering Tyrant's current schemes to, to bring yourselves and any you deem worthy uh, to the island of Bonmu uh, in two months' time, where you are invited to take part in this decade's uh, Ruby Phoenix Martial Arts Tournament. Uh, and Daiji, as you read this, uh, you're aware this tournament happens every 10 years and has uh, for quite some time. And it is one of the most prestigious tournaments uh, of martial prowess in the world that is not an actual war. Uh, historically, the prize for winning the tournament is beyond fame, local fortune, and celebrity. You also get to pick an item from the uh, basically multi-planar vault that the sorceress Hao Jin accumulated over many thousands of years of her practicing magic before she disappeared. Um, so you get to pick basically an almost god tier item for winning the tournament. And they just one yeah. or like one yeah. per person? Uh, the winning team gets to pick one item, which huh. is fun in and of itself. Well, more, more junk mail, bloody hell. She throws it now. Okay. I, I think you will shoot yourself. <laughs> so we're playing Agents of Edgewatch oh. then, I guess? Uh... <laughs> nah, it's all good. Um... Oh, wait, wait. It's, oh, it's treasure now. Yeah. I'll um... get out of that trash. <laughs> no, she, I guess, would mull it over and then um, call a group meeting, I guess, as soon as possible. Probably go over to Shijin's and, um, like, let them know. Armory, you'd be in the shop, and I'd probably send a message out to Hyper. I wonder if might be drinking, so I don't. I'd think... be trailing the I'd... people. I would be in the trash outside. So <laughs> <laughs> amazing. So I'm going to give you a little lore dump, just because I know we're coming into this cold. Um, just because this, just so you guys get the context of this. Um, Hao Jin, the sorceress, is known as the Ruby Phoenix, and she is one of the most famous sorcerers in the history of Galarian, the planet before you. Um, she is called the Phoenix because for most of her existence, she seemed to be able to resurrect any time she died. Um, about 300 years ago, she disappeared, and in her will, and this is all kind of common knowledge, this is not hidden lore, um, when she failed to uh, show up to an appointed meeting at, at a, a temple of, of the god Abadar, 
who is the god of vaults and treasure. Um, she was supposed to show up every so often to basically prove that she still existed. Um, when she didn't show up, they broke open her will. And her will was that every 10 years this tournament should be held. Uh, and every decade it would slowly be used to empty out her entire collection of uh, magic items. And most, I think Shi Jin, you in particular, would be well aware that her vault of uh, wondrous and magical items is considered probably the most impressive on the planet. Um, and so this tournament has been going on for 300 years. Um, so this would be the 31st uh, invocation of this tournament. Um, so that's kind of the context of this tournament itself. Um, the XXXI games. The CCC? No. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm wrong. Never mind. I was counting hundreds. Damn it. Me no Roman. Do we, do we get some Olympic music with this too? Um, I didn't set up and music a, today. How about a training montage? <laughs> Getting stronger. I'll make you a, a of, um, Sorry, go ahead. I'll make, you a, I'll make you a circle of trash. I mean treasure, sorry. Nice. Okay, sorry for the interruption. So you called everybody back. Iocan, well, since we're ready? interrupting people, I posted something in the Saturday team for everybody. Oh, oh boy. God. I have already seen it. <clears throat> oh, boy. Come on. Did no one else <laughs> laugh? That's I'm terrible. Coming. We need funny jokes. Okay. For that one dodgy tips like a mug of ale over your head. Well, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> she never goes for his passes, so he just gives up. <laughs> yeah. It's good, oh. to know that, it's good to know that he's resisting the fire because uh, natural curiosity with flames and goblin. I'm going to be burning things at some stage. Nonsense. I expect he's going to be fighting a dragon at some stage. Fighting or riding? I, I... Yes. Both. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, so I guess we are uh... Should get people together and uh, we uh, think about this tournament and whether we can sign up. Well, I'll go find Gale. Are. Well, sign up. I mean, it looks You've like we've got an invitation. Yeah, so it I looks guess like just... we've been voluntold, so I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> I guess we just you know hire a charter a ship because well, it's a long fucking way. Shijin, can you teleport us there? Um, let me level up a couple times, and I can. <laughs> I can do. I can do. Like my immersion. I can do like a hundred mile. Wait, let me see, because I have. I don't so think you, do. you can. I'm I'm pinging right now where Bonmu the island is. Oh yeah, but I can use like, uh, uh three times a day. So I can do 300 miles a day. That's probably faster than a boat. Yeah. Fuck it. I dare say so. Right? How, fast I mean, can a, how far can a boat go in a day? Let me see. How much, how Not 300 miles. How much treasure can we take with us? Uh, it's a teleport spell. I think it's just limited by people, isn't it? I'm pretty sure literally everybody in the party has a bag of holding at this point. Yep. On average, sailboats can sail up to 100 nautical miles, which is 115 mile real miles in one day when they run downwind. But yeah. this is like a this is like a modern sailboat. So my idea sounds better. Uh, yeah, or your idea. Well, <laughs> I go with the teleporting. I think it seems more reliable. 
Now we can, like, you know, stop by and visit the locals on the way or something. Throw things at them. Just out of curiosity, we don't have to roll every every teleport, do we? Because I don't want to end up in a wall. Uh, no, this is... is... I need to turn you up. Where, what's your hyper, right? Yeah, hyper. Uh, you said you worried about me teleporting into a wall? Yes. So I don't think it can put you into a wall. It can put you up to 1% of the total distance off in the direction. So as long as we're not like dropping into the water, we should be fine. I think the, the method of getting there, just so you guys know, is, is mostly up to you for flavor. I'm not going to make you guys like... Roll. We're fancy and we fly first class. If I get thrown, I'm going to start stabbing. <laughs> I think there's technically airships in Galarian now. Yeah, we could just charter one of those, but I, I don't know. I think we... Like, Shijin can just teleport, and I don't think it costs... Um, him anything to oh, 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 hold now. One of these we get flight attendants. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the map of airship routes in Guns and Gears right now because I'm pretty sure they gave one. I'm make... just saying a Talon, a Talon flight attendant would be kind of hot. Talon, is that the right word? No. But over one percent of the total distance, so hundred miles, we're only gonna be like a hundred mile or one mile off after each teleport. So that's pretty easy correction, assuming we have like an accurate map, which I assume we would since we own a magic shop or I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not super worried about you. Um I have a compass as well, if that helps. Got a six. We will use the compass. <laughs> Man, now I wish I'd read the back half of Guns and Gears better for this one-off thing. There it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, there are... Oh, no, that's rotating gear. It looks like yeah. in lore, you could get from Magnamar, where you are, down to Absalom, and then take airships basically all the way over to within probably like a charterable ship's distance. So you could basically, I'm going to draw a line on the map, you could take airships, nope, that's not what I wanted, like to here, then to here, then to here, then to here. Then to here, and then to here. So that is a totally possible uh, airship flight plan if you guys wanted to hire airships or, you know... Common deal one. Uh, follow general I'd have, be, I'd have to be level 13 to get the upcast to a thousand miles, so... Right. But I mean, I'm, 300 I'm, miles a day is not bad. I don't know how fast an airship goes. I'm uh, also more worried uh, how many people can travel with you. Actually, wait, can I get 400 miles? Oh, yeah, that's the thing? other thing. Hopper's got a point. You and four targets touched, so you uh, can't teleport uh, all of that's, us. That's a... That's a... It didn't mean we'd be traveling. That's anymore. a minor detail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going in luggage or a bag. Well, you are. The bag of holding. Yeah, you can hold your breath for 10 minutes, right? You'll be fine. Do people suffocate in a bag of holding? After, After 10 minutes, yeah. Time, yeah. Well, that's why we had to, we just have to keep remembering to take Hyper out of the bag every 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, shit, we forgot Hyper. <laughs> <laughs> he did. <gasps> yep. Roll new character. Wonder how could you just leave Hyper in the bag like that? Got distracted. Yeah, fair. Fucking just drinking booze again. What? Should be halfway through our first one. Shut up. <laughs> so, so how do y'all want to get there? You want to do the teleport idea? You want to take an airship? You want to hire a boat? What you want to do? How how fast are the airships? And how much do they cost? Is it is this like expensive or is this no, like chump change? How much will you pay for flight attendants? 
That's the more <laughs> real question. I think the short answer is the cost of the voyage, however you guys do it, is not something I'm going to be tracking right now. Um, yeah, ship. You are like rich well, high club. So I'm assuming you guys have been making decent money at least in the last few months, so the cost of chartering a voyage is fine. I'd say we just I say we just take the airship. That way yeah. if I like if we have to, we can always like teleport from the airship if there's like a problem. But worst, yeah. worst case scenario, I can pay them in treasure. I have been collecting it for a while outside the front of the shop. They drop some good stuff. <laughs> I mean, the no. worst thing that happens is the, all the flight attendants figure out Dodgy's sleeping with all of them. <laughs> they threw a Dodgy overboard. No, that no. was... Uh, that that would have been Sarath, I think. It was Sarath. Yeah. Dodgy hasn't slept with anyone. And probably won't. I okay, would I would spinning. say pretty, I would be but spinning. I know better. I would be spending the voyage reading up on uh, the the history of this place we're going and studying the language. Um, do you know the language of Tianxia? Or... I don't. I would assume no. I'm going no, to D- 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 does. Well, I just I'm curious. She could teach you. It's, it's probably going to take a good month to get there. However, you do it. Well, I thought you said. Um, uh, no, no, we have two months until the start. Okay, but so it, I'm just saying it's, it's going to take most of that two months to get there. However, you do it. I don't know what the scale on this map is, but it's the fucking planet, and you're going to the opposite side. Um, so Around let's see. the world in seventy days. <laughs> um, so I think what I'm going to do is since you've declared that you're studying the language. Uh, I am going to add the language of TN to your character sheet. Um, So you have basically a passable ability to communicate in the language of Tianja, which is the continent that you're going to. Um, If it's not obvious, Tianja is kind of the Asia-Pacific stand-in, if that's the wrong term, whatever. Racist. Yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a weeb goblin. I already know how to speak their language. Do you? You barely know English. Doesn't matter if I can't speak English. <laughs> um, also, quick, I need, I need to be able to. An airship would definitely be faster than me teleporting. This this says the maximum of an airship today is like seventy miles per hour. Oh shit! There you go. So even if this yeah. is like old world kind of airship. Like, even if it was like 50 or 40 miles an hour, it's still going to be faster. Plus, I assume they use magic or something? I don't know. I'll admit, um, I just remembered that airships existed as we were having this conversation. And I have not exhaustively read the rules of airships in Pathfinder, because it's a new thing. So, I'm willing, yeah, I'm just going to say it'll take you... Most of the two months to get to uh, the city you're going to over there, uh, which I believe is Goka. Let me just double check. Goka being Goka. one of the um, largest cities in Tianja. Um, trying to find my page again because I'm doing lore reference on the fly because that's always good. Um, so you. You get to Goka, which is kind of over here, uh, within um, about a month and a half. Um, Due to weather and other issues, it takes a little bit longer to kind of negotiate that final leg of the journey to a city called Jahoy. Uh, And then from there, you can charter a ship if you would so desire to Bonmu. Um, There are no dirigible services to Bonmu, Um, but in... Ja Hoi, there is there are representatives for the the tournament who will help you kind of get on a vessel that you feel confident will take you to the island of Bonmu if you so desire. Well, from that distance, well, I I wish there was a a scale on this map, a scale so I could be like, well, we can just teleport from there, but I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing. Like over- if- if we assume Galarian is the same size as the planet Earth, that's probably 1,500 like to 2,000 miles. 
ish. You could do that in five days, but I guess a ship would be safer. I think the downside to doing the teleport is you don't know probably any of the geography or anything about these islands. Yeah, you like wind up in the middle of a forest or something. Yeah. You can take a boat. Boat to nose! So during the voyage, I was um, surrounded by people not interested in treasure, just alcohol. God damn it. So, uh, Hypa is gathering treasure and drinking the whole time. Uh, Shijin, you've studied enough to gain the rudiments of the Tian language. Um, Marikana, what do you do during the voyage? Uh, he tries to pick up Elvish, but fails mostly. Okay. Uh, cool. We'll make it rollable, but he's probably going to fail at it. Why? Why, um... What? One of the, one of the flight attendants was an elf. Oh, <laughs> I needed to know why. Like, so you've been hitting on an elf the whole time. Um, I'll say if it comes up in the future, you're gonna have to remember this. Uh, you have a flat fifty percent chance to understand or glean some meaning from an elvish conversation. <laughs> this is gonna um, be so fun. <laughs> we'll say we'll say the flight attendant did. Uh, did towards the end of the journey finally relent and and you had some fun um but you kind of get the appearance you get the feeling that she was mostly bored at that point oh um, wow and just like, <laughs> and just like we've been on the ship so long why not at least he's pretty buff um <laughs> so you got to have a good time uh I mean, I've, oh yeah i'd say i would be much better in the second sense so fuck it I mean, he's like 300 pounds of muscle. Let's go with it. Yeah, it's, it's just I'm not going to turn on short second. Any this wasn't in the right space. It's... Yeah, uh, wanderer. Um, two questions. One, I think you said you actually had a character name, and I'm not sure if that was true. Yeah, I have a character name. I don't think it's uh, it's in this thing. So it didn't make it. What is your character name? It is Gavrov. Even Gez. Gav Rav Even Gez? Even Gaze, yes. Even Gaze, like even and gaze? Yep. Okay, I think I just changed character name. Did that work? Yep. Well, I see it in the PC thing. Yeah, I see it in the PC thing on the top right. Because I'm trying to Make sure, because usually once we get actually playing, I try to refer to people as their character name. Uh, so then I guess for Gavrov, what does Gavrov do, if anything, over the course of the flight to uh, Jahoy? Um... He's drinking and playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, respectable. Respectable. Give me... I have to look at something. When when Gavrov plays cards, is he... Oh, I'm sorry, is, you know, I'm assuming the image is a guy, so I'm assuming it's a guy. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, is Gavrov trying to actually win cards based on skill, or is he using deceit? Like, how is he? How does how does Gavrov play cards? Skill, I suppose. Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm just trying to see if you win or lose money, because I think that's fun. Can I also take a roll if I acquire a disease from eating something from my treasure? Uh, uh, make a fortitude saving throw, and I'll come to that in a second. Yes. Um, I got a crafting acrobatics, deception, diplomacy. Torn on what role? Um, I think maybe performance, just because it's kind of in the middle of the road. 
Um, I'd say if you want to give me a performance roll uh, for Gavrov, um, then I will try to decide what to on do your, with that. On your character sheet, Wonder? Open up your character sheet. The easiest way I find it on this map to do it is open up there. And then it will be under like you can you can do it from the top, uh, or you can do it from the character sheet where you go to your core skills. You can click on the performance, can you? What was that? I think oh, Chris just dropped. fell off. Welcome back. Who just fell off? Oh, Chris. I added Gavrov to the map. That makes it easier to get to things. Gavrov is the size of a continent. Jesus. Yeah. One second, I'll be right back. Actually, my skill thing disappeared. The hotbar that I usually have up top. Yeah, because you have to have your token selected. Oh, right. That's why I pulled Gavrov back on, because that should hopefully, for Wanderer, um, if you click on Gavrov, there's, there we go, cool. Uh, 23 at this level, I'll say you basically uh, break even and are able to wheel and deal out of having any debts uh, over the course of this. Um, basically, you play the cards pretty bad, but you're kind of demeanor Just while doing so. Red. Huh? Middle of the road. Yeah, middle of the road skills, so you lose a little money, but your uh, your kind of uh, panache and charisma while playing uh, gets people to kind of just forgive the debts by the time the trip is over. Um, and so Dodge may have helped. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I just think it's more interesting to to actually like. Are you are happens. are you saying that a bunch of people might have gotten thrown off the airship? Possibly. No ticket. Okay. <laughs> um, no, take, oh my god, I forgot about that. Yep. Uh, it's probably an age check right there, isn't it? Uh, okay. Um, no, that was amazing. Uh, so somebody else said that they were going to do something, and I said I'll deal yep. with that later. What was that? Oh, I'm I'm hyper hyper now, so. oh you want to see if you get sick? Yes, because I, I definitely would have eaten something in my treasure that I they, found. Yeah, fortitude also. saving throw. I'm doing uh, plus the bonus from Iron Gut Goblin. Okay. Oh, he's dead. Uh, he's not dead, but uh, I think that's actually below your level DC. Let me just double check. I think that um, beats it. That's 30, isn't it? DC's by level. Oh, yeah. Nope, that does beat it. That's fine. Cool. Um, no, that, that ties it actually. So uh, what I'm going to say is that you, um, you get queasy a few times, but you never quite start, uh, throwing chunks over the side of the airship. Um, I guess Hypa can interpret that however their mind does. I'm not sure what that means. It means it was edible. It is fine. Cool. Um, let's see. I think I've touched. Have I missed anybody at this point? Mm, no. Oh, well, okay. Did I miss you, Dodgy? Did I ask what you did over the trip or no? I I could just say that I was helping Shijin learn um, Tian because cool. she actually knows the language. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Uh, and I'm assuming Murakana didn't ask for help to learn Elvis. Just tried to hit on the stewardess. <laughs> Hey, she started helping him towards the end. Okay, great. So y'all arrive uh, in <laughs> Jahoy. Um, there are Wait, is someone else here speak English? Elvish? Yeah, Daji, the Elvish. Oh member. She is an elf. <laughs> the literal elf in the party. <laughs> oh, maybe that's see. good to cover off. Um, yeah, I... he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't ask because he was too busy trying to assess uh, the responses to his conversation via her breasts. Wait, wait, wait. When when do elves have horns? She is an elf, but tieflings are usually a corruption of a specific 
you know, main hey. species. So. Oh, I forgot she's a tiefling. All right, carry yeah. on. I have no more questions. Yeah, well, I think uh, well, Americana's a uh, human slash thinks is dragon. Uh, Shijin, you are a gnome, correct? Well, I know that's true. So Her I don't know. Heritage, he's a gnome heritage tiefling. Yeah, we need uh, to expand on this. Americana was raised by a dragon, so he thinks he's a dragon because no one ever told him otherwise. Yeah, Americana's touched in the head. Uh, Hyper, Hyper, you're a goblin. Oh, a bow out. Uh, Dodgy is a elf tiefling. Yep. And Gavrov is a human? Yep. God, so glad we have, like... Humans? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always play a smorgasbord. I always play humans or typhlings. Anyway, um, random side note. Uh, so you get into Jahoy. Um, do you guys accept the assistance from the representatives of the the tournament to to charter the rest of the way there? I check their ID, but yeah, if it checks out, <laughs> I don't know. Just try to sense if they're legit or not. Uh, I would also like to try and pickpocket one of them while they're having conversation. Oh, God. <laughs> this is how we get thrown out. <laughs> um, okay, so to resolve those in order, uh, Dodgy. Um, yeah. Based on the pomp and circumstance and deferentialness that other people give these representatives uh, and the frankly, quality of their clothing compared to most of the folks you see, they seem pretty legit. Um, they're basically yeah, treated like envoys um, when you find their location in Jahoy. Uh, hyper, hyper for trying to pickpocket, basically, uh, you get the impression after a few attempts that not only are these envoys, envoys, they are also highly trained monks who just basically keep kind of like judo slapping you away every time you try to pickpocket them um hey, judo slapping can we say he actually succeeds and then it just disappears from his pocket after one of them bumps into him <laughs> they just steal it back yeah sure you finally try to pickpocket one of these monks and find out that they are in fact monks and have no worldly belongings um <laughs> so there's nothing to pickpocket uh so to kind of fast forward a little bit um You've ascertained that these are legit envoys from the tournament. Um, do you accept their recommendation for chartering to the, the island? Uh, uh, IG. Sure. IG, these guys are broke. I, I, don't know, I, think, I don't think we can trust them. they got nothing. Well, I mean, but you frequently have nothing, and yet I frequently employ you. So you are super quiet. I don't know if that's just me or no. I have met like two hundred percent. Oh, because oh, I keep taking my headphones off and it keeps moving my mic. Is that better? Yep. I'm just gonna blame Australian internet. Um. Okay. Is anybody opposed to me just like railroading us a little bit to get us to the first actual thing? I am unopposed. I'm against it. No, go ahead. <laughs> cool. I am going well, to go ahead. Oh, I just just I was uh told that I'd be riding a dragon very soon, and I believe we have a dragon in the party. So we do. Uh, uh, You're gonna have I, to ride Mericano. Can I attempt as we're moving on to this to climb on his back and ride him to this destination? That's not if you're gonna ride him, that's not where you're gonna climb. Oh god. <laughs> Wait, which one is this? Is this It's the goblin. Fuck yeah. He's just my little shoulder bro. <laughs> Can I not so you just have a shoulder legs? goblin? Can I just not use my legs and just sit on his shoulder for a meantime. Works for me. Oh god. Americana thinks you're a very gangly child and just goes along with it. I mean, he's roughly the size of one. <laughs> he's like, what, three foot? 
I'm like, I think. Every time I talk and every time I talk in Discord, it moves my character down. Oh, really? That's weird. Yeah, I gotta be careful because uh, I, I use my my mouse as my push talk button. What? <laughs> the hell? I always you have crazy son of a gun. Why can't you just have it as F five like a normal person? Mine's on my yeah, joystick. Just talk we're talking about. F5. F5 is not normal use. But... It is. I, I use my joystick as my push to talk. Uh, I tried well, doing that, but then I realized I don't have a joystick. You do? Yeah. But I it's just not connected to your computer, them. usually. Yeah, that's true. Damn it, stop with the union doses. We have, like, <laughs> underage people in this chat. <laughs> Oh, man. I use voice activation, so how's that? Madness. Well, I use voice activation as well, but I thought it'd be nice to put push to talk in case I need to talk to anyone in the stream. Ah. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> you, your, your boat arrives. I don't have a boat on this map because, you know. It uh, sunk. It sunk, yeah, sure. Um, so you arrive, uh, it's, it's about mid morning, uh, and it's, you arrive on, uh, the date that you're asked to arrive. A couple other boats come in as well. Um, and there are a variety of what appear to be other teams who have been invited to this tournament, um, uh, disembarking from their boats, uh, gathering in this small dockside village. Uh, on the island of Bonmu. Uh, the village itself looks very kind of thrown together. Um, all the buildings are new. Uh, the port itself looks like it was built on maybe the ruins of an ancient port. Um, but everything, everything constructed looks pretty brand new within the last month or two. The wood is still fresh. Uh, you can even smell the the scent of, of lumber having been worked quickly, uh, and you find yourselves uh, basically milling about with uh, quite a few other teams of various burly looking and in some cases very exotic looking folks, um, many of whom their background most of you are vaguely familiar with. Uh, and you are on this dock uh, getting off the boat, and that's where you are right now. Um, does anybody want to do anything? Right, I'm gonna open up with a fireball. <laughs> when we look around and you say we see these other like kind of teams arriving at the same time as we are, what like do we see about these other teams? Yeah, so there's, uh, to kind of give, this is not all of the teams in the tournament, but I grabbed a, a kind of random selection of folks uh, to, to throw on this map. Uh, I'm going to ping some places as I give some general descriptions. Um, there's a pair of uh, archers over here uh, where I'm pinging that look like they are uh, from the equivalent of... Uh, the Middle East in Galarian. Uh, there is an orcish man standing where I'm pinging now, uh, surrounded by a few other people who I don't have tokens for. Uh, they appear to be probably uh, from the Northlands. They have a very Viking look about them. Uh, to the far south side, there's a quartet of, uh, you assume from Tien, uh, which is the kind of the, the general Asia stand-in. These folks look uh, a bit more uh, Indian in their background. There appear to be a, a pair of twins and two others with them. Uh, there's a group over here. I think there's a guy called Brartark who you can see his name and the rest of their names aren't showing up for some reason. But it almost looks like a, a WWE team. Like there's a there's a huge muscle bound dude. There's a couple of uh, monks and martial artists looking types, and there's uh, a woman a who stripper. could be best described as 
uh, a female Ring wrestling girl. champion. Uh, there's a up here. There's a trio of uh, men with horses who look like they are cavalry fighters. Uh, over here, there's a motley mix of uh, a vaguely Asiatic-looking uh, man with a kitsune, which is a fox, um, hmm. a kenku, who's a bird person, and I didn't replace that last token, so I apologize, but uh, somebody who looks distinctly arcane in their training. Uh, there's another fellow over here who appears to be uh, from the Mwangi Expanse, which is kind of the Africa stand-in. Um, and then there's a pair of monks over on the far side of the dock. Uh, each of the teams is kind of milling about, mostly talking to themselves, um, not getting too close to anybody else. Basically, everybody is looking around and kind of sizing up all the other clusters of people in this place. Do we see like that there's someone in charge here or is it only the other contenders that we see? Uh, there is a cluster uh, up here and I didn't pull piles and piles and piles of tokens on the map just because I didn't, but kind of uh, up in this square area, uh, there appears to be a group of uh, very... Uh, so there's a there's a group of uh, basically it almost looks like a, a mix between envoys, monks slash uh, uh, bodyguards, kind of milling about in this this square that has the red tents in it. Um, some of them are standing very strictly at attention and keeping an eye on everybody else. Some of them are talking to each other. Uh, there kind of seem to be two groups. Uh, one group appear to be these very serious individuals, and then there's another group of uh, kind of a mixed bunch of different backgrounds, some of them looking like they're not from TN, all kind of talking to each other uh, and looking around as if they're waiting for something to happen. Hmm. It's almost like they expect the fight. America, I might uh, moving on. I might uh leave you for a sec. I want to go over to this orc. I want to see if I can get some information. Have at it, my friend. Can I uh do a a roll to jump off his shoulders? He's pretty tall. You mm -hmm. you can just hop off. That's fine. Oh. Uh, uh, just a wave and a shout to the orc in orcish and try to befriend him in a friendly manner. I would say, you're looking very green today. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Amazing. Uh, so his, okay. his retinue uh, kind of steps back a little bit, but in a guarded manner. And uh, the man in front of you uh, looks you up and down, or the orc in front of you looks you up and down, uh, kind of raises an eyebrow and says, Well, we share the same skin color. Uh, good day to you too, sir. Parker, <laughs> when I next see you, I'm just going to say you're looking very white today and see if that doesn't just make it fucking weird. <laughs> Like, Jesus, dude. <laughs> well, I was, uh, <laughs> help, I was hoping uh, with our fellow Bond that we share, if you could uh, maybe tell me about anything around here. We just got here and we're a bit confused of what's happening. You've been invited to this tournament, I assume? Yes, the group and I have got our invitation. Hmm. Well, I am Urnak Lost Wind. This is my team. He gestures to the group behind him and says, 
We are the Winter's Roar, and I am here for the honor of my clan and to win glory. Hmm. Well then. Oh, hey, team name. I forgot about that. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> so uh, th we were thinking of Blood Axe. Yeah, um, Blood Axe. <laughs> uh, well, last time it was no. Commit Sudoku, so... Yeah, true. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. That's your influence, Hellscream! Actually, Totem came up with that name first, and we kind of stuck with it. Um... I don't know. Something I oh know, something edgy like Scarlet Chorus or something. That'll do, fuck it. Raging Bloody Dragons. That seems hey. a bit long, but <laughs> Show some respect. I'm pausing to let y'all decide on a team name because if you want one, you should probably pick one. How do you even mm. type in game? If you click on your character and then type in chat, it'll just show up as a chat bubble over your character. So y'all good with Scarlet Chorus? Because mm. I am extremely original and just stole it from Tyranny. We're going to say that, that Maricana has no input on this because he wasn't there for the decision. What? You're like... Oh, oh okay. yeah. <laughs> Look at that. The heck? <laughs> I put a language mod in. Oh, nice. So you can actually type shit in chat that shows up in a language, and if you don't know it, it'll show up as like random bullshit. Yeah. Well, that's fun. So y'all can't read that, but I know what you said. Um, I think I'm the only one that can read it if I, if the other players don't know the language on their character sheet. Yeah, and I guess no one else speaks Fossian, so... I don't think so. Oh, well, that's what happens when I pick common. Never mind. Haha. Uh -huh. NPC token doesn't have a language. That's annoying. Good to know. Anyway. Uh -huh. that's I mean, you could probably just make a custom NPC and then have them. How about that? I don't know what that was. I don't think anybody can read that. So, what's the um? What's the group name? What is, what is our group name? Uh, Scarlet Chorus. Yeah, why not? But C O R U S. Or what? It, what Scarlet? I spelt it. I think, hopefully, correctly. I linked it in the Fist of Ruby channel. That? Nope, I spelled it wrong. That's fine. Whatever. Scarlet Chorus. Cool. Um, so the last thing that actually happened in game was the orc being very... Uh, Out here for honor. I'm here for honor and glory. Blah, blah, blah. And for the honor of um, Grey Skull, that's it. <laughs> Say someone gets me. I'm gonna do it in text since the other people can't understand Orcish. So, well, the other people is that okay? I see how it is. So you're asking him where the treasure is. <laughs> oh boy what have you started <laughs> oh god what's going on am I going to have to save the idiot 
Uh, Though I didn't know what he said, because I don't speak Orcish. Yeah, so you, you speak to him in the language you're speaking to him in... Oh, wait, in Orcish. Oh, he does know Orcish. Never mind, I thought it was Goblin. Um, <laughs> I would hope the Orc knows Orcish. Yeah. Sorry, I assumed it was Goblin, because last time... Um, so he he replies to you... I have to do it in Orcish. The fuck am it literally just said booba in there. <laughs> what? I'm That's not even joking. I can actually like have side conversations now. This is fun for me. I'm assuming you yeah, can read that the... hyper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the words was booba. So the rest of you just hear unintelligible orcish happening. Which I'm assuming is a series of grunts and clicks. Basically. <laughs> How many joy? Right. Jesus Christ, Arm. What? I just saw your picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. His picture of his screaming character. <laughs> no, look in, look in Discord. So you're stealthing? Oh, where'd you go? God. So you're going. You need more joysticks. You're going into that building in stealth. Oh, I'm trying to, but I don't think I rolled very well. Uh, yeah, so you walk into that building. It's uh, mostly full of crates and boxes of various descriptions. Looks like a well. warehouse. Oh, well. As you do that, uh, this uh -oh. guy over here says, Hey, how's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Take it you guys got the invite to the tournament as well? Yeah, we're pretty excited. Uh, looking forward to seeing what happens here. Um, you know, I mean, we're from we're from mainland Tien. Where are you guys from? Uh, I am from Cheliax. Uh, ooh. Well, that explains the armor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, our Lord is Murdius is uh, everywhere and everywhere, so... Uh, and he yeah. just, just kind of smiles and nods at you. Sorry, I'm trying to read text right. at the same time. Uh, am I still... Uh, why am I in the language of Nagaji now? I don't even know what the language of Nagaji is. Oh, that's why. Boy, it changes my language selection if I change characters. That's weird. Um, boy, I'm going to have to learn how to do that. That's fine. Ah, oh, you're gonna have to also check if the people that we're talking to do have the ability to talk to us, right? That's gonna be weird. Well, what I can do is I can click a token. I'm, ass I mean, most characters know common. I'm assuming between common and TN, we're pretty good on general communication. But yeah. if it comes I'm up, I'm guessing. Come up. I'm guessing if we just talk like in chat, we're we're always like if, so. If we're talking in Discord, we're always technically using common. Yeah. Also, everyone in. I think our party can speak Tien except Murakana. All of us speak common. But I'm the only one that speaks Draconic. That's true. Did you have to double check that before? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was pretty much guaranteed. Wow, this is one of those fun side effects of putting a language mod in that I did not anticipate at all. But I like it. Um, I, I'm having fun. So after he says that to you, Hypa, uh, he turns around and begins conferring with his team, very clearly indicating that he's not interested in talking to you anymore. <laughs> what on earth did you say? Oh, actually, she wouldn't know because she's not even close to you. Yeah. I mean, we're only yeah, like, we're like 20 40. feet away, so we can see the guy just like cold shoulder him. <laughs> Oh, poor goblin. And then sad music starts to play and it begins to rain softly. But only on hyper. Yep. I'm, go I'm going back to my mount. Screw this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Shijin, what are you at on time? I'm just trying to make sure I know where we're at. Um, I mean, I'm pretty much there, but I, I have a little bit more. So, like, okay. whenever y'all, I'm gonna I'm gonna push things forward a little bit, then, um, just so we can. Yeah, whenever out. you come to like a stopping point. Yeah, I think I got I got about five or ten minutes of stuff I want to cover, and then we can call it just to make sure we kind of get some things set up. Um, so as you are all having these conversations, uh, all of the the envoys uh, in the square to the north of you suddenly, uh, you, you almost hear the them come to attention. Um, and an older man uh, comes out from a cluster of buildings to the north and a hush falls over the crowd and all of the assembled teams as this man comes forward uh, to the docks to, to try and address everybody here. Uh, and he clears his throat, and it almost seems as if even the ocean's waves cease their crashing against the docks for a moment. And then he speaks out in a loud, clear voice, uh, and I'm going to say this now for anybody who's new to the group, I don't necessarily do accents if I don't think I can do them, so sometimes I just don't. Um, so there you go. Uh, the man speaks out, I am Sifu Jonuo, emissary of the Ruby Phoenix Tournament and guardian of the legacy of Hao Jin, the immortal sorcerer in whose name you are gathered here. Know that in simply receiving an invitation to qualify for the tournament, you have already earned a place among the greatest fighters Galarian has ever known. However, only eight teams may continue on to the tournament proper. And that is why you are here today. Welcome to the island of Bonmu, or as dubbed by Lady Hao Jin, Danger Island. This will be your home for the next few days, and it is here you will earn the right to enter the tournament. Bonmu is vast. It is a place of ancient ruins and sites left untouched by the centuries. Lady Hao Jin has reclaimed this place and picked out a suitable location for each team to reside during their stay. Of course, nothing is given freely at the Ruby Phoenix Tournament. Each team has been assigned a specific location somewhere on this island, but many of these sites are filled with dangerous creatures or worse. It falls to you to make your site safe. Within your residence, you will find the Phoenix Necklace and three silver feathers. Your mission here is to acquire and keep seven more such silver feathers. Without further delay, I leave you to the whims of Bon Mu. The pre-qualifier begins at sunrise tomorrow. May the worthiest win. And with that, the teens burst into excited conversations as escorts appear from the ranks behind the envoys. And uh, a woman walks up to you uh, and and comes to meet... Sorry, you said they give us three feathers and we must find seven more? The feathers will be in your residence that you have to go secure. Uh, and... But we have to find seven more, right? Yes, so you need a total of 10 feathers to advance to the tournament proper. And uh, apropos of that, uh, a, a woman probably in her late 20s uh, walks up to you dressed in the, the scarlet and gold robes that the envoys and the now you know escorts um, have been wearing and says, Hello, my name is Ingdani. I will be your escort. Would you like me to take you to your residence and explain the rules of this competition further? That would be lovely. Thank you. Uh, and she... Does anybody else say anything? Nope. No. Mercado just bows his head. Just like, mm, Yes. Uh, so she, she gestures for you to follow her and begins uh, walking. I struggle to hold on as America bows and I slap him on the back of the head. 
Murakami doesn't even notice. Well, this, that's a stiff breeze. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so, so as you follow her, she begins taking you out of the city. Uh, she walks up uh, to this area over here. Um, and she points out to you, um, one of the first things you should know is inside this compound are a variety of portals to markets in the city of Goka. Uh, if you find any time during this pre-qualifier round that you need additional supplies or equipment, uh, you can make purchases here. Uh, be aware that the items they sell are mostly common in nature. There are more exotic items on the island, both planted by the Ruby Phoenix and probably existing here from before the tournament began. Uh, but if you need basic equipment and supplies, this is the place to come back and get it. I'm sure we'll still find some more pieces from this place. And uh, I guess if it if we get back to it, I'll explain the way these tokens work later. But they're all set up as shops. Um, but I'll describe that later, um, whenever we actually have to buy stuff. Uh, Can I assess the the area from this point of view for treasure? Uh, so basic. Uh, she'll explain. Uh, you don't see anything, and, and she notes each of the shops is actually staffed by one individual and they are connected uh via portals to the city of goka uh, which is a few thousand miles away um so there are no actual goods on the island itself you have to work with the uh representatives of the shopkeepers uh, we've done this to specifically control any contraband from coming on the island during the pre-qualifier to the tournament. To which Dodgy swears under their breath. <laughs> Contraband? Well. Americana well, at that, last quizzically. Yeah, it's a pretty long word. Um, Contraband? Um, was more asking of what... what, what constitutes contraband here i think there was any to be honest uh it's it's more to make move sure that mouth. go ahead oh. I move up my mouth i'm trying to direct him <laughs> i like it um she she thinks maybe contraband was the wrong word we're trying to make sure that everybody has access to whatever they brought and the same selection of items from all of the vendors who have uh, been approved by the Ruby Phoenix to supply this tournament. So there's no uh, shenanigans with uh, supplies or equipment beyond what you already came with or what you find on the island. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, does anybody need to visit any of the shops, or shall we proceed on the, the walk to your residence? It's close, but I'd rather get a move on since you only have until tomorrow morning to secure it. No, I think we're good. Yeah. See our residence. Uh, so she begins walking off uh, to the east. Um, you don't necessarily need to like worry about dragging your tokens. I'm just conveying movement. Um, as she be, as she's walking, she uh, says, I think I should give you uh, an overview of the basic rules of this pre-qualifying round uh, so that you understand, obviously, what the rules are and what I can and cannot do uh, to support you. Uh, so I am your envoy here. Uh, if you have any questions about the island, uh, about any history or... Uh, information about the Ruby Phoenix you would like to learn, I'm more than happy to help you there. Uh, I can answer questions, uh, but it is important to note while I will be with you uh, throughout all three days of this pre-qualifying round, I will not partake in any of your challenges, combats, or other activities you get up to. I am 
mostly here as an observer and uh, a, a resource to make sure that you understand what your, your options are. Um, does that make sense for all of you? Are there any questions there? That makes sense. Okay, well then let me give you at least the basic rules. Uh, you can feel free to ask me any questions about specifics, but the basic rules for this tournament are uh, starting tomorrow morning, uh, every day for the next three days, uh, between uh, sunrise and sunset, you are free to explore the island, uh, challenge other teams uh, to gain more feathers. You can wager feathers in combat. Uh, if you'd like to do so, you need to make such a challenge in front of one of the envoys uh, uh, of, of the tournament. You can recognize them. They'll be wearing robes similar to me, but probably looking less friendly. Um, <laughs> which, which brings up the, the, the first and most important rule uh, for this, this qualifying round. Uh, any emissary you meet on the island, uh, they and their agents have the absolute say in any adjudications of the rules of this tournament, and you are not allowed to take any violent action against them. Uh, if you do so, you'll be disqualified. Uh, the emissaries also have a number of enforcers throughout the island. Uh, they are here to uh, accept, sanction, and observe uh, matches in this pre-qualifying round. Uh, they can also declare unique challenges and matches if they so desire. So if they tell you you need to do something, you need to do it. Um, to qualify for the final tournament, uh, you need to get 10 silver feathers after you've secured your residence. Uh, and once you have those 10 feathers, on the third day, we have to go uh, to Mount Hamenabu, which is the highest mount on the isle, and present them. Uh, so you have to get those feathers and keep them and get to the top of Mount Hamanabu on the third day to, to get into the tournament proper. Um, once we get the Phoenix Necklace at your residence, any emissary can demand that you show them the necklace and at least one feather. If you can't do that, you will be immediately disqualified from the tournament. Uh, let's see, just a few more main rules. Um, you can no longer leave Bonmu for any reason until the conclusion of this qualifying round. If I observe you or any emissary observes you doing it or anybody detects that, you will be immediately disqualified from the tournament. Uh, and the, the final main rule, uh, I think I actually already said it, yeah. On the third day, once you have a complete set of feathers, you can go to Mount Hamamabu uh, and confirm your entry into the tournament. Um, so the first eight teams that get there on the third morning will advance on and everybody else will be sent home. Uh, those are those are the general rules. Um, does anybody have any questions or, or anything like that right now? Can so, feathers be acquired through other means besides challenging them if we need to get them from other teams? Uh, so if you challenge another team, there are some specific rules about that. Um, you have to declare a challenge in front of an enforcer or an emissary. Not me. I'm kind of impartial in that regard. Uh, and then the emissary will tell you uh, if you need to go somewhere where to go. Um, you can challenge any team that you haven't challenged before or lost to. Uh, um, sorry, any team you you haven't challenged before, uh, no, I was right the first time, or lost to you, uh, but if you've won a challenge, you can't challenge again. Um, and once you challenge a team, you have to wager feathers. Uh, so basically, each, each challenge is a, a wager between your team and the other team based on however many feathers each team agrees to wager, and then the fight will be overseen by the emissary. Uh, outside of that, the only legal way to get more feathers is if one of the emissaries uh, gives you a different challenge that is not a straight uh, combat challenge. Um, you cannot uh, steal feathers, you cannot uh, magically create feathers, anything like that will 
most likely result in you being immediately disqualified from the tournament. There's not like feathers to be found on the island somewhere? Uh, there may be. I'm not sure. I know that, uh, at least in some of the discussions that I was part of before this, there were many ideas, but I think the emissaries themselves know more than I do. I don't have any details. I know most of the locations on this island uh, and can help guide you in the geography, but as far as helping you actually find a feather um, or, or, or come up with some means of gaining feathers, I, I have to remain impartial. And we have... So no fighting between teams is allowed unless the challenge. Uh, challenge has been initiated. Uh, you, can, even... you can certainly fight without a challenge, but you can't gain any feathers that way. So rules on aggression, are we allowed to kill other, te other teams for the fun of it, or we have to stay just in a challenge mentality like what is the, what are the rules we got here there are there's there's technically no rules about what happens during a challenge um if someone dies they die um you can stipulate any conditions you want as part of a challenge uh i guess my only recommendation is um you know the way you treat other teams may have some impact on on how the rest of the tre teams treat you um you know, in, in some of the previous tournaments, teams that got overly aggressive found that that ended up working against them in the long run. Um, because, you know, nobody wants to be killed. But if uh, if it happens during a match, that is not a, a, a... that will not disqualify you. I have to go. Let me know if anything... Yep, this is and the last thing I wanted to get to. This is, this is where I wanted okay. to get to. Uh, and one okay. more question. I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Thank you. Sam. Sam. Yeah, Sam. How many teams are there present? Uh, there's 32 teams in the pre-qualifying round. So the 32 teams Damn. will compete amongst themselves, and the first eight teams that can present 10 feathers on the third day will be moved forward into the final, more traditional uh, martial arts tournament bracket. Mm. Um, so, that in is plan B. Some other, some other rules that might be uh, worth noting, um, since we're kind of really getting into the challenges and, and the tournament. Um, if you win a match against a team that is a sanctioned challenge, sanctioned challenge, blah, blah, uh, you cannot challenge that team again. However, they may challenge you again. Uh, so winners can't challenge losers. Losers can challenge anybody they haven't beat. Uh, you can re-challenge a team that you've lost to until you run out of feathers. If you ever run out of feathers, you're disqualified from the event. Uh, and once you have 10 feathers, you will not be allowed to gain any more. Uh, no emissary will give you feathers after you have uh, completed your set of 10, no matter whether you get them through a combat challenge or uh, any other challenge if the enforcers come up with one. So once you get 10 feathers, you want to hold on to them until the third morning if you get them before then. What if we were given feathers by another team? Does that count? Um, I suppose if somebody freely gave you the feathers, I can't think of a reason why that wouldn't be allowed, but I'm also not sure why another team would do that. I can think of a couple reasons. Behave. <laughs> I, know. I just want to sharp. I just want to do the sharpening my dog slicer on top of America. Oh, no, I don't mean with violence. I have um, a number of ways to persuade people of... Uh, I might, the I might have to double... Have I might have to double check the rules there, but, you know. 
We'll see. I'm going to have to keep you two out of trouble, aren't I? Yeah, I've always been out of trouble. <laughs> what do you mean? I, oh, I um, one I'm other... You're so lucky I don't have Twitchy, because I was going to be like super Twitchy paranoid and start shooting people whenever I seen them, but I don't have it anymore. Um, that would have ended very, very quickly. I know, but it would have been fun. But yeah, I think the other... Um, kind of given the direction this conversation is going, um, if a team chooses to yield during a combat, uh, you must honor it or be disqualified. Um, so if a team says that they give up a fight, you'll win the wager, and that is the end of the fight. Sure, but if they're like, you know, say they give up, but like, you know, an axe is already in motion or something like that, you can't really, you know, freeze time, or at least I can't. Well, or uh, I've, I've done a poison <laughs> on them that lasts for three turns. <laughs> like, yeah, well, I'm not going to get disqualified. Right? The emissaries do have final say in adjudicating any edge cases or uh, in the rare case that there is a tie situation, the emissaries will determine which team wins the match. So there will always be a winner and loser. I imagine she looks very tired of answering questions. No, she's, she's actually like pretty happy. Like she's, she seems fine. There's, there's a lot of rules. She's happy to like clarify stuff. America, she's not smiling at you. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not a flight attendant. She's safe. Well, oh boy. Kind of want to see what happens if. Well, never mind. Um. <laughs> oh God, are you gonna roll for something? No. <laughs> if we if we fly back again. I'm just, I'm just curious what would happen if you actually got into a fight with Ing Donnie, because, you know, it would just be par for the course if she beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Oh, God. I think Wanda has yeah. wandered off to our new house, potentially. Yep. So to, to kind of put a bow on this session, um, as you've been walking, you've traveled off the map. Um, but at a, at a certain... After... A little bit of time of uh, kind of walking down one of the paths here, uh, you see another team with another guide or emissary or I'm sorry, escort. Uh, escort's really such a bad term, but whatever. It we sounds so <laughs> weird. That's why I was like when you said it, I was like what? Yeah, I know. I'm just going with the book, man. The each team has an escort. Whatever. Uh, you see uh, the team with the with the the kitsune, the martial artist, the sorcerer, and the bird person coming up behind you. Uh, it's not really happening on this map. I'm just kind of narrating it here. But uh, the the main figure uh, of that team shouts out, "Hey, I'd love to! I'd love to stop and talk for a minute." Uh, and I think that's a good place to end it because we can get Shijin back in for the next session. But I why do a... I feel like I'm going to be murdering these people? Well, we're in a tournament. We're going to kill all of these people. <laughs> it depends cool. on how pretty they are. That's not true. I cast repelling <laughs> pulse and knock all of them into the sea. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and are immediately disqualified from the tournament. Thanks for playing. I'll roll the next campaign. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, 